the science of agriculture advances, the world will be better fed and clothed and housed. You too will reap great harvests. Ironically, however, the very innovations that are making possible dramatic improvements in human well-being are also creating new problems which raise the specter of an alarming and possibly catastrophic disaster to the biosphere we live in. The negative impact of population growth on all of our planetary ecosystems is becoming appallingly evident. Tumultuous scenes on a field in eastern Germany. Opponents of genetically modified food want to storm a field and destroy the GM maize being grown on it. The demonstrators are trying to make a statement. They want the dangers of genetic engineering to become known to the public, they say. Santa's genetic altered canola got into my field. And then he went on and specified. He said whether it cross-pollinated or if it blew in by the wind, by birds, bees, animals, or falling off a farmer's truck, a combine, and so on, it didn't matter. The fact that there was some plants there, I violated Monsanto's patent, even though I didn't want it in my field. Number two, which is the most important one, I think, he ruled any farmer that has a regular conventional plant. It doesn't matter what kind of plant, if it's a tree, if it's a seed, and it gets cross-pollinated with Monsanto's gene against your wishes and destroys your property, my plant becomes Monsanto's property. Now stop and think what that means to farmers all over the world, farmers, gardeners, anything to do with a life-giving farm. scientists to collect all the known health risks of genetically engineered foods. And we found thousands of sick, sterile, and dead animals, thousands of people linking toxic and allergic type reactions to these foods, damage to virtually every system in lab animals studied, and numerous ways in which these foods can create unpredicted side effects. We found that the actual assumptions that were used as the basis for safety claims, most of them have proven untrue. Last fall, during lunch with co-workers, Grace Booth enjoyed three chicken enchiladas. The food, she recalls, was very good, but then something went very wrong. I felt my chest getting tight, and it was hard to breathe. She didn't know, but she was going into shock. What are you thinking at this point? I thought, oh my God, what is happening to me? What is going on? Something is very, very wrong. I felt like I was going to die. In the emergency room in nearby Oakland, the diagnosis was severe allergic reaction. And from here, Grace Booth's story reached official Washington. At the time, the national corn market was in an uproar. Starling, a gene-modified corn not approved for human food, had been found in taco shells, and recalls were emptying the shelves of corn products. The fear was possible allergic reactions. If I want a bowl of cornflakes, I want to know that it's safe to eat a bowl of cornflakes. Um, Do you I, feel that level of safety right now? Absolutely not. Here, taking genes from one species, like, for example, a spider gene is inserted into a goat in the hopes that they can milk the goat to get spider rib protein to make bulletproof vests. Human genes are inserted into corn to make spermicide. Jellyfish genes are inserted into pigs so that their noses glow in the dark. And the foods that we eat have insecticide genes from bacteria inserted into the corn and cotton. So in every cell of the plant, in the case of corn, in every bite of the corn, we're eating an insecticide produced from a bacterial gene. In 2002, a concerned mother in Oregon put a couple thousand dollars into an initiative to label GMOs. 
How can we trust the same multinational corporations that told us that PCBs, DDT, and dioxin are safe? They don't even want us to know what it is that we're eating. The FDA ignored their own scientists' warnings about the dangers of genetically engineered foods. This is our children's future we're talking about. Let's join 25 other countries that require labeling. It doesn't cost their farmers or consumers anymore. Vote yes on 27. Let's label genetically engineered foods. The measure was defeated by the $4.6 million industry campaign that features a farmer who resembles the mother. The last thing we need is more government red tape, more bureaucracy, and higher costs. But that's exactly what Oregon farmers, consumers, and taxpayers would get if Measure 27 passes. In response to demand from their citizens, all 15 countries of the European Union adopted rules requiring the labeling of genetically engineered food. But I think there's a very good reason why the corporations have fought so hard against this labeling. It isn't just about consumer choice. Without labeling, there's no real traceability for the health effects of genetically engineered foods. If you're a mother and you're feeding your baby infant formula, uh, and it's not labeled as genetically engineered soy, for example, and your child has a toxic or allergic reaction, there's no way you're going to know that that was caused by genetic engineering because it's not on the label ability of the corporations. So they're opposing labeling, not just because it creates choice and they're afraid that their products will not be bought, but also because labeling is the key way we can trace the health effects of genetic engineered foods and the key way to get the corporations liable for these health effects. Now, there's a number of ways in which genetic engineering could alter our DNA uh, when we eat the food. Uh, originally, the FDA scientists, they were concerned about the antibiotic-resistant marker gene, which is used in most GM crops, transferring from the food we eat into bacterial genes inside of us. The secret documents uh, from the FDA scientists, an entire division wrote in all capital letters in their summary, it would be a serious health hazard to introduce a gene that codes for antibiotic resistance into the intestinal flora of the general population. They were, and they were ignored. They were basically told, don't worry, genes are destroyed during digestion. We also know now that genes are not destroyed during digestion, but they can also transfer into our cells. They took uh, mice and they fed them DNA. This was normal DNA, not genetically modified. And they fed it to pregnant mice, and they found that in the brains of the offspring were fragments of the DNA from the mother's food. They, they fed genetically engineered feed to pigs and found the genes in all sorts of their organs. So if we eat genetically engineered crops, we might end up with the genes not only in our gut bacteria, but in our cells possibly integrating into the DNA and influencing ourselves. The Flavor Saver tomato was the first genetically engineered food to reach the public. Calgene, the corporation that produced the tomato, had done three voluntary feeding studies on rats and found lesions in some of the rats' stomachs. Over the objections of several government scientists, the tomatoes were approved in May 1994. The Flavor Saver tomato didn't hold up in shipping, and consumers didn't like it, so it was taken off the market. Now, when genetically modified soy was fed to mice and rabbits, they had damage in virtually every organ that was studied. And what was particularly interesting was that the young sperm cells were altered, the embryos were altered, and when rats were fed genetically engineered soy, more than 50% of the offspring died within three weeks. The FDA has no safety test requirements for genetically engineered foods. Why not? Because in 1992, they came up with a policy, and in the policy it came, it had a statement that said the agency is not aware of any information showing that these foods created from these new methods differ in any meaningful or uniform way. On that basis, they said, the companies themselves can determine if the foods are safe. They don't even have to tell us if they're introducing a genetically engineered food into the market. Now, seven years later, 44,000 documents were made public from the internal files of the FDA, showing that that sentence was a lie. 
The person in charge of policy at the FDA is Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney and later Monsanto's vice president. And the FDA was under orders from the White House to promote the biotechnology industry. 